Regardless of Neil Spencer's concerns, I wanted to conduct a simple trial. We selected 20 people at random. We asked them to read that week's horoscope for Capricorn, but as a test, we said it applied to their own star sign. Not only do you have clever Mercury and ambitious Mars focusing on success, but now the sun is at the same pivotal mid-haven angle of your solar chart. I have no idea what that means. Put simply, this means that this is your moment to go that extra mile to become the person you dream of becoming. Remember, however, that there will be others who want what you have and will stop at nothing to get it. Astrologers say this should fit just Capricorn and not the rest. But what actually happened? Yeah, maybe. To be honest, I felt there's some Mercury energy this week because there's a lot of arguments around and a lot of bad vibes. Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of makes sense. What a lead well junk. It could apply to me as much as to the next person. Was it, yeah, well, in a way, yeah. I, I am, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going on a flamenco course in Spain. That isn't necessarily pertaining to me this week. It's pertaining to me generally. <laughs> the same number of people agreed that the horoscope was accurate for them as disagreed, and similar results are found with proper large-scale experiments. Technically, all but one of our group should have disagreed, namely our only Capricorn. Does that to you? Not at this moment, no! Am I taking this too seriously? I believe astrology misleads the public, denies scientific progress and belittles our universe. There's a far richer way of looking at the cosmos. Astronomy is a triumph of the human intellect, a real science, constantly enriched by new evidence. Forget about the astrologers' charts with their constellations and planets moving in and out of this house or that house. Go into a real observatory and look at the Milky Way. Or go out into the country on a moonless night. Just lie on your back and gaze up at the stars. The heart-stopping sight you'd see is a hundred billion stars spinning through an expanding universe at a speed of a million miles per day. The light from some of the closer stars started its journey at the time of the dinosaurs you're staring into a deep time machine. And yet, even as science unravels these natural wonders, our society is drawn to the slim pickings of supernatural belief. Half the British population now say they believe in paranormal phenomena. Over 8 million of us have owned up to consulting psychic mediums. What I want you to do, Richard, for me is just to pull me out eight of them, please. Simon Goodfellow claims that, with these cards, he can use his psychic powers to tune in to the spirits of dead people around me. Seven, eight. These voices from the past can apparently give him a glimpse of my future. Lovely, Richard. Thank you. Now I feel he's giving me the initial G with his name, okay, now I feel with this man as well, I feel he was a family member, and I also feel very strongly with something to do with advertising that was in, something to do with newspapers with him as well. Now I do feel with him as well, he's telling me about changes that are coming up in your life at the moment. I see total changes in how you're working, to how you will be working in the future. The word Simon seems to be fishing for is retirement. The obvious next step for most 60-somethings. Mm -hmm. It won't be as active and it won't be as active for you. And I do feel you have to grasp that. When it this comes. could apply to anyone my age. But can Simon back up his more precise statements? What was that um, male relative with a G? That, that, what, what, what was that about you said earlier on? I do, right, the male relative with a G. Right, I do feel with him. I don't feel he was a family member. But I do feel with him, right, it was some connection. I thought you said he was a family member. Did you? I say that? Did I, I with a family so, yeah. member? Yeah. I think you did. Um, right, okay. Maybe. Let me see if I can uh, feel him here still. Yes, okay. Right, okay then. What I feel with him, right, I feel as though there was a lot of things. It was a very strong character. 
another feeling he's given me is very it was very regimented as well and I feel he served in some forces in the forces in some way as well but can you understand anybody with a military background that was connected to you well, I've got really nobody military in my background at all and actually nobody beginning with G either I don't right know. okay spirit G has rung no bells but now another voice comes from the ether oh well, she's given me the initial E with the name now I do feel with her as well it's some thing to do with I feel a grandparent and I want to give you an E sounding name uh, my grandmother had a name beginning with E at last, something I can identify with. Yes, sounding name. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Tell me more about her. I mean, the lady, I do feel with her as well. She had a lot of cats. A lot of, of cats. It's cats. Perhaps not. She never had a cat. She hated cats, as a matter of fact. Um, right. Uh, she liked dogs, but she hated right. cats. Well, I can understand. Not everybody, though. What you've got to also remember with this as well, not everybody can relate to everything that a reader will say. No. Not everybody. I mean, I've had people like yourself who have... Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Because normally people who come to these events come for a reason and because, because they want closure and direction in their life. And also what you've got to think about, Richard, as well, some things are very raw to me. Psychics may believe they communicate with the dead, but I've seen no evidence for it. My concern is that for some people, this superstitious nonsense can be far from harmless fun. If you've lost somebody dear to you and, and I'm trampling all over those memories by telling you that they're here now saying this and that. I mean, that's none of my business, and if I'm just doing it because I can earn some money out of it, um, I've known cases of people that have, are, you know, have lost somebody, lost a child that's so dear to them, and they cannot get over the fact they've lost the child, and become addicted to these... these... Okay, this is a lady who is trying to connect with somebody at the front here. And I'm just Darren Brown is a celebrated illusionist, but also a skeptic. He makes clear his performances depend simply on mental tricks. She looks very, very elegant. And there's, there's guilt on her part. A feeling, of, a feeling of guilt. I think your father passed when you were very young as well, is that right? And he gives me the inside intelligence on how a psychic medium might exploit entirely earthly trade secrets. They're using a skill called cold reading, which is a way of communicating information to somebody where it sounds like they know everything about you and they can reveal facts seemingly about your life and describe your character in a, in a way that you'd be amazed by. Whereas in fact it's, it's a linguistic trick or a set of linguistic tricks where they're saying words and you're constantly supplying the meaning yourself, but it can be very convincing. She's asking about, I want to say Charlie, Charles. The psychic yeah. will, if it's with a group of people, throw, it, throw out a name. And someone she left behind. Now that name could refer to a person in the audience who's living, or it could refer to someone that's died, or it could be a friend of the person. You know, it really could be anything. So it's up to somebody to pick up on it and turn it into what they want yes. it to be. Is it another relationship that you had? Sorry. That's my husband's name. Of course, if they say yes, that was my husband, then the reader can go, yes, that's right. He's here. He's saying. He's saying. He still loves you, or, or, or whatever that is. That, mm. and they turn it back into uh, make it sound as if they were saying it was your husband. When in fact, it could have been anybody. It could have been the name of the person that was sat there, Lily or Lucy or something like that. Yeah. Far from it being all vague or saying things that apply to just everybody, you'll get very specific details. She's saying something about a hat that you used to like, or something with a hat. Yeah. One thing I saw was. Uh, there's a dog, he's saying uh, something to do with his dog that used to sleep in the hallway. And the answer sort of came back, sort of, no. Yeah, well, it's something in the hall, it could be a picture of a dog. Um, picture, is there a picture of a dog in the hallway? And the answer came back, no, I mean, I've just put up another picture, in, I've put up a picture in the hallway of, um, of the family or something. That's it, he's saying he doesn't like the picture in the hallway. You want to, he much, uh, and it, the, oh, dog, the dog was forgotten. Dog. Yeah. But it actually started <laughs> off talking about a dog. <laughs> There's a network of over 500 spiritualist churches across Britain. Here, Tuesday night is seance night. 